Joining us on this conference call today are one championship chairman and CEO, Chatri Sityodong, and one athlete, Demetrius Johnson. We'll get right to it. Go ahead, Chatri. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for uh, uh, participating in the conference call. We just wanted to uh, introduce uh, DJ out here in Asia, but also talk about, uh, you know, from a global perspective, what this means to DJ and what this means to the organization. Uh, obviously, it's a huge uh, move for uh, all parties, and I think... Uh, Bigger things are going to be coming uh, down the pipe uh, as a result. Um, in any case, uh, let's just kick it off to uh, DJ. Yes, uh, thank you guys so much for having me on the call, everybody in Asia and also on our side, of, my side of the world, in North America. Um, I'm very honored and grateful to be able to be a one athlete. Um, it's a huge move um, on my part and for my career. I'm looking to get over there in Asia and test my skills that it gets the best in one championship in the flyweight division. Um, I know those guys are animals. <clears throat> I know Jay Hay, Moraes, um, all the other guys are beasts, and I'm looking to get my uh, get in the, the ring with those guys to see how how well I fare out. Great. We can go right into questions, Joanna. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on the telephone and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel your request, please press the pound or hash key. Please note, we will take one question at a time from each caller. If you have more than one question, please request to join the question queue again after your question has been addressed. Once again, it's star 1 for question. Our first question comes from Damon Marcy from MMA Weekly. Please ask a question. Hey, guys. Uh, DJ, congratulations on the new deal. Uh, from my understanding, this was a, a move kind of started with your management team. So can you kind of walk us through, like, how this idea even came about and, and why did you want to ultimately leave the UFC? Um, at the end of the day, you know, I, I felt that I, I'm pretty young in my career. And I wanted to try something different. Um, I've always wanted to travel the world and compete and actually grew up watching uh, Asian mixed martial arts, you know, with uh, pride mostly. And be, to be able to have the opportunity to travel over to Asia to compete in a wholly different weight class, it was something I couldn't pass up. So obviously I believe, you know, with working with first round manager Malky, you know, after my last fight, I was like, you know what, do you, think, you know, do you think, uh, this is something to be possible. It goes, hey, it's possible, man. And so Maki was able to get it done, and um, here we are now. And I'm, I'm grateful that everything fell, uh, fell into the right place. And now I'm a one athlete, and I'm looking forward to uh, see what happens. Thanks, DJ. Thank you. Our next question comes of Tom Taylor from BJPen.com. Please ask a question. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, my first question is actually for Chatri. Uh, Chatri, your your former flyweight champion Kyrat Akhmadov said uh, on Instagram the other day that he had heard from you that that talk about DJ's potential move to uh, win championships kind of started all the way back in January. I'm wondering if that's accurate, and if not, when the talks for this big trade really started, or when they kicked off. I mean, the talks began uh, as DJ had mentioned. You know. Uh, when DJ had reached out to Malky and uh, Malky, uh, I guess, took the lead and coordinated uh, everything. And I think he came up with the idea with uh, Ben Askren um, and, and the whole trade. And, and so that's how it happened. I'm not sure what Kairat is talking about, um, but uh, I know Kairat Akwetov has already issued uh, a challenge to, to DJ. And I think Kairat, if I'm not mistaken, is, is now 25-3 uh, and three or 25-2. and two. Um, one of the best flyweights in the world, um, combat sambo world champion and uh, uh, amazing wrestler, um, and uh, heavy hands. So he uh, he's definitely one of the guys that would um, potentially be welcoming DJ into uh, one championship, um, and I think it'd be a, an incredible fight between the two. Um, yeah. Thank you. Our next question comes from Brian Mazaki from Forest. Please ask your question. Brian, your line is now open. Thank you. 
Yes, the first question is for Demetrius. Um, I know that, uh, first of all, congratulations on joining One Championship. But uh, One offers a lot of different things maybe that, uh, I don't know, maybe they, they, they weren't quite as uh, you know, available for you with UFC. Uh, I, I know you're a huge gamer, um, you know, and you, you, you are, you're using your Twitch channel for that and, that and that sort of thing. So outside of the ring, and out, or outside of actually competing uh, in martial arts, can you talk about some of the other opportunities that were attractive to you with joining one, or was it purely about martial arts? Well, obviously it was you know uh, purely about martial arts, but they also do have some more things coming down the pipeline um, that you know I, I cannot discuss, obviously. Um, and obviously, just being over in Asia, where you know video games is very very uh, looked at cool as to in America if you play video games as an athlete you look at it as a nerd so that that's also something that kind of interests me as well and obviously my size over in Asia you know I, I'm a normal height I guess you can see I know Chakri is probably 5'9 five, 5'10 five, five, I'm not sure uh, but for me I'm not the smallest guy in an organization anymore I'm like the third heaviest well not third heaviest but not the smallest guy anymore and actually in America you know, everybody always looked at me as uh, a child, I guess you can say, and I, I won't have that issue when I'm in, in Asia competing. I think Brian, also, you know, for me, it's like uh, DJ embodies uh, true martial arts. Uh, obviously, Asia has been the home of martial for five thousand years, and it's basically been, uh, you know, a, a way of life uh, for Asians. Uh, and the honor, the respect, the humility, the integrity, the discipline, the compassion that you earn through thousands of hours of training, it's, it's, it's how we live our lives out here in Asia. And I think uh, DJ not only is you know, the best pound-for-pound pound king to ever do it, um, but I think he embodies everything authentic and everything beautiful about martial arts. And so I think he's going to transcend uh, you know, being just a martial arts star. I think... If you look at who's transcended just being a martial arts star, whether it's Bruce Lee, Donnie Yen, Jet Li, uh, you know, th- there's countless of uh, Jackie Chan. There's countless of people who transcended, and they're all martial artists, but they transcended uh, just martial arts and became true global superstars. I think DJ has the potential. Um, I know for sure his technical style will be very well loved out here in Asia. And I know his personality, his character, his values are really appreciated out here, you know, um, you know, I, for one, definitely, uh, you know, of course, I, I uh, have a lot of admiration for uh, DJ's athletic career, but I'm much more impressed by his character's values and who he is as a human being uh, and his life story much more than anything else. So I think there's a lot of stuff, um, Brian, that, that uh, you know, in the coming weeks, in the coming months, in the coming years will show DJ to be uh, someone bigger and larger than life, not just in the cage but outside of it as well. Thank you. Our next question comes from Jesse Holland from MMAmania.com. Please ask your question. Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking the time today. Uh, this question is for DJ. Uh, I think we're all in agreement that you're the best flyweight in the world and probably the best flyweight of all time. Uh, but before that, you were also one of the best bantamweights in the world. And I know there's still a lot of work to do at 125 pounds, but... I have to imagine somewhere down the road, considering what's going on in the bantamweight division, that that's somewhere on your radar. Can, can you talk a little bit about your short-term and long-term goals? Yeah, obviously, you know, my first-term goal is to get over to Asia and to compete in the flyweight division. Um, obviously, uh, the bantamweight division is uh, my my teacher, uh, training partner, Bibiana Fernandez, um, and me and him would never cross paths the fight. I, I don't see me ever me, me challenge Bibiano for his title. You know, I am... A man of respect, and I respect him as a friend, a brother, <clears throat> and a teacher. You know, he's my jiu-jitsu coach. So when he's done with his reign, I will see where I'm at in my career, and then I will decide where I'll go. So that's long-term goal is obviously to stay healthy and keep on competing. And if I'm able to capture the one championship title, flyweight title, then I would like to defend it as many times as I can. <clears throat> then down the road, I'll sit down, you know, my coaches, and obviously – uh, the hires up at one championship and decide what I'll do next. But first things first, to get over there, get my first competition uh, under my belt in Asia, and then go from there. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you. Our next question comes from of Alex Lee from MMA Fighting. Please ask your question. Hi, uh, my first question for Chatri. Uh, have you had a chance to speak to any other major promoters or owners like you know Scott Coker since reports of the deal first came out? And um, has anyone been asking you sort of for advice, ideas, you know, offering any, any other comments about uh, a trade and how to work these trades out? Uh, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of discussions going on um, globally. That's all I'll say. Uh, but, I mean, for sure, uh, this historic first trade ever in, 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 in MMA history has sparked off a lot of discussions globally with all the uh, major organizations. So, I, you know, if I had to predict, I don't think if this is going to be the last time it happens, um, which is great for, you know, uh, the fans, the organizations, and, and the athletes. Um, yeah, I think it, 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 it's something new that's uh, unprecedented that will cause great positive impacts globally. Uh, thanks, Chachi. And for Demetrius, uh, what kind of changes, if any, are you going to have to make to training? I mean, do you see opportunities to work with camps over there, you know, depending where you're booked in Asia? Or um, do you expect your routine to be pretty much the same outside of the, the travel? Uh, I'll probably, I would love to tra uh, train at Evolve MMA when I come out to Singapore. Uh, and then I'm also going to do some cross training with Viviana Fernandez. Typically, you know, me and him train together when he comes down to <clears throat> uh, Seattle. And he'll train at my gym. But I plan on going up there and training at his gym up in Canada just to get more of the man from the jungle and more of the guys who also train up there as well. they got a lot of guys who actually compete who are my size. But still training at uh, AC Pay Creation, and that's about it. And obviously getting ready because it, the one thing that very was intriguing to me about uh, one championship is it's not always in a cage. You know, they always switch it back and forth between a ring and a cage. And out of my whole entire career as a mixed martial artist, I've never actually trained in a cage. So this time I'll actually be able to train in – a ring and prepare for my fights depending on what it's going to be in. And that kind of actually treat me instead of I never know which one I'm going to have to get ready for. It's something fresh and new. Thank you. Our next question comes from Matthew Scott from SCMP. Please ask a question. Hey, DJ. Matthew Scott here from the SCMP. You mentioned Bibiano. How much of an influence was he on you in this uh, making this decision? Was he in your ear for a while to get you to come out uh, to Asia? And will you be in his corner next week in Singapore? And will you be bringing a message for the other fighters in one's flyweight division? Uh, I would say if Bibiano had an impact on this decision, this decision was <clears throat> that uh, he had an impact on me. Uh, I think it was right before he signed with one championship and he had the opportunity to go to other organizations. He was like, you know, long term for me, Asia has always been good to me. I'm a, a martial artist about respect, honor, discipline, and I feel that Asia was the best move for me. And he told me, he goes, I tell you, DJ, this is going to be good for you. Just watch, just watch. So obviously me and Bibi on are very close, a family man, um, training partners, he, uh, and I'm a student of his. So with that being said, you know, it was a big decision. And I would not be in Bibiano's corner. Um, he has his, his team for that. I will be out there in Singapore. If he needs my help, I told him I'll be there to help him. And, you know, I'm not going to come out there and bring a message to any of the flyweights in that in, in the White Championship division. I'm coming in there. I, I'm, I'm a new athlete. i got to work my way up the ladder just like everybody else did. I'm not looking for any handouts. I'm not looking to go over there and cause any drama because that's not a way of a martial artist. A martial artist is a person who works hard, Keeps his keeps his mouth shut and uh, do what he's told. Thank you. Our next question comes from Sazali Aziz from Straight Time. Please ask a question. Um, hi, uh, Sazali. Uh, first of all, for Chatri, uh, obviously with, with this uh, sort of trade, uh, you know, Ben experience is, uh, is going over to the UFC. Uh, you know, I. I'm sure you're very happy with, with uh, you know, capturing uh, DJ for one. Uh, do you feel that uh, one has got the better end of the, the trade almost, uh, and, and why? No, I think everybody wins. I, I genuinely believe that one championship wins. Uh, I genuinely believe UFC wins. I genuinely believe Ben Askren wins. I genuinely believe DJ wins. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think in this situation, genuinely, everyone's 
you know, really happy. I mean, because it's, it's uh, you know, for one championship, we get the number one pound-for-pound pound greatest mixed martial artist in history. Um, and, and his style, his technical style, and who he is as a person is going to resonate very, very well in Asia. Um, and Ben Askin going to UFC, he's going to prove that he's the best in the world and he's going to dominate. And, you know, his style... Uh, is also something that's very appreciated by American fans. So I think everyone wins. Thank you. Our next question comes from Andrew Railor from Fox Sport Asia. Please ask a question. Hi, DJ. As you know, one championship offers a lot more than just mixed martial arts. Uh, they've recently, in the last few years, been involved with submission grappling, boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing. Does it appeal to you to branch out beyond MMA in your competing over the next year or so? Yeah, I, I definitely think I have the skill set to do it. I actually have a Muay Thai, a shoot boxing uh, uh, competition underneath my belt. Um, but, you know, first things first is uh, to get, you know, my, my toes wet for the mixed martial arts. And it's definitely, you know, something, as long as Chachi's okay with it and if my coach is okay with it, I, I don't see... With all of that, and that's one of the beautiful things about one championship is that you're not just stuck in one pool. Um, I'm sure if I put my name in a hat to, you know, try a Muay Thai fight, I'm sure they wouldn't be opposed to it. As long as I'm able to, you know, display that I, I have the skill set to do that, which I truly believe I do. Yeah, I think that's a great question, Andy. Um, for sure, you know, I think the future we're going to see a crossover world champion across the different arts. So you'll have an MMA world champion who's also a Muay Thai world champion, who's also a kickboxing world champion on the one championship platform. And I think that's what it makes it very, very exciting that we have the best of the best in each of the disciplines, whether it's from MMA to Muay Thai to kickboxing, boxing, submission grappling, Jiu Jitsu, et cetera. So I think uh, it, it allows all the martial artists to best express themselves um, and show their greatness to the world however they want. So you can imagine down the road DJ being, you know, uh, one flyweight world champion in mixed martial arts and a one flyweight, you know, kickboxing world champion. It is These things are very, very possible. I do expect to see crossover fights in that regard. Um, and and so, so we, we have some exciting things in store uh, for one championship athletes. Thank you. Our next question comes from Christopher Mohan from Malay Mail. Please ask a question. Hi, uh, question for Chatri. Uh, with Aspen now left for the UFC, what's the plan for the welterweight title? And also, what does this departure mean for the welterweight division? Um, well, we announced uh, that our Jakarta show uh, on November 17th will uh, be for the vacant uh, welterweight title that Ben has left. And it will be between uh, Sebastian Kadistam and Tyler Maguire, um, both uh, incredible welterweights uh, with a great track of their success. And that should be a very explosive, dynamic fight. Thank you. Our next question comes from Carl Dimesta from FHM Philippines. Please ask a question. Hello, DJ. Congratulations and welcome to Asia. This is a question for both DJ and Chetri. Of course, uh, it's probably inevitable that you'll come up against one of the Team Lakai competitors who are in your wheelhouse, although you've said you won't be gunning for the Bantamweight title. Um, could you talk about uh, a bit, please, about Gehi Ustake and Joshua Pasha and other Lakai competitors, what they bring to the table, and your thoughts about competing with them? Yeah, uh, the Team Lakai competitors are, are amazing athletes. Uh, I've actually held Bibiano train for <clears throat> uh, Keller Bellingham uh, multiple times. So I know they're no joke, uh, amazing uh, stand-up. Uh, their takedown defense is getting a lot better. Their grappling is getting a lot better. I've actually watched J. Hay and Adriana Morales, uh, their last fight. I actually watched that one, too. So they're fantastic competitors, and I can't wait to be able to mix up with those guys. I truly believe that their stand-up is legit. Like, these guys have been doing it since they were young. You know, I started, you know, in America, you don't start doing martial arts unless your parents put you in martial arts and karate when you're four or five, but... 
my upbringing came up in wrestling, and I, I joined wrestling just because I was in high school, and I was like, oh, I'm going to wrestle. Then I started doing mixed martial arts when I was 18. So these guys have more training in martial arts than I've ever had. So I'm looking to see how I uh, fare against them. Yeah, I think that's an interesting question. You know, DJ, uh, one thing, uh, you know, DJ and I spoke yesterday, and I, I just, uh, you know, um, kind of gave DJ guidance in that, you know, I, out here in Asia, everyone's a martial artist, practically, and uh, it's a whole different style of mixed martial arts that he's going to encounter, because these strikers are high level, I mean, much, much high, higher level than, than uh, strikers you find in, in Western organizations, and it's just because, as DJ had mentioned, you know, a lot of these strikers uh, in MMA have just been doing it since they're three years old, four years old, um, and now they've really caught up on the grappling and the wrestling, um, and so it, it really makes for a dynamic, very, very different fight. Um, and, and, and DJ, of course, is incredible in all areas of his game, um, but I think it's a new challenge for DJ. It's a new look, and he's going to grow as a martial artist as a result. Thank you. Our next question comes from Lewis Smith from MMA UK. Please ask a question. Hi, DJ. Um, just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the new scoring system with one championship, obviously, with more weapon sort of promotions, they score round by round, but one actually score as a whole. Um, do you think you have to sort of adopt a different style of fighting that we've got one and a different mm. scoring system like that? Yeah, obviously the the style of one championship, the way they score the fights, is, is, is they score the fight as a whole. And I've always been <clears throat> surrounded by that by my coach Matt Hume um, from his days judging uh, during, uh, Pride. And the way we train the AMC Pigration is to train to finish. So I'm always looking for the finish. I'm not going to change it the way I fight. I always have to finish a fight on the ground, stand it up. I got wins from submissions, uh, knockout wins. So nothing, nothing's going to change at all. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it actually scoring the fight as a whole, not trying to, you know, I've never tried to win rounds by round, <clears throat> round by round by round, but having that focus on just trying to put it away the whole entire time, which I'm already doing. Thank you. I, yeah, I think, that's, I, I think uh, uh, this is Tractor here. I think that's also a big uh, factor, right? I mean, it, when you're fighting round by round, you can game the system and go for a takedown in the last 10 seconds of, of, of a round, of a close round, and win the round. In one chapter, like that doesn't count for anything. Uh, at one chapter, we, we, we count damage as, as the, the biggest criteria. Um, and then, you know, near finishes, uh, whether it's a K or submission uh, attempt, at near finishes, those are the criteria we, we, we judge. Um, and it's as, it's as if it's a real, quote-unquote, self-defense situation. Uh, and that's what martial arts is supposed to be about. It's not about gaming you know, each round and, and going for a takedown and hugging somebody on the ground um, just to, and do nothing and no damage. And just, to, you would, you just, you could score 30 takedowns in one championship, but if you don't inflict any damage and your opponent inflicts damage on you uh, during the, 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 the person who inflicts damage on him, that's what would happen in, re, in real uh, self defense situation. Um, you know, a takedown just is a change of scenery. It's not necessarily. Uh, a fight, so that's a big difference, and I think DJ style again uh, of always coming for the finish uh, as a martial artist is, is going to resonate very, very loudly here in Asia. Thank you. Our next question comes from Eddie Goldman from No Hold Bad. Please ask a question. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. DJ, congratulations on this deal. My question is about the themes that uh, Chatri, and I think you mentioned also about respect and honor in the martial arts. The last organization you were in uh, tried to have people do trash talking. You saw a riot in it, people attacking a bus full of fighters and not getting punished, all this type of thing. What, what do you see about that issue, about the culture of the martial arts, and how do you want to position yourself now that you with one championship? Well, I was always never the biggest fan of, you know, all the 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 way people went about uh, promoting their fights over in North America. I was, you know, I, I saw it as a way of some athletes using it as a way of bullying, uh, a way of trying to gain followers. You know, when an athlete says, you know, on Twitter, why, aren't you, why haven't you signed the contract yet? 
to another athlete. And for me, I see that as a form of bullying because all that's going to do is stir people to go to that person's Twitter or social media and say, you're scared, you, you're, you don't want this, you're a chicken. And when I see professional athletes doing that, that are trying to embody the, the spirit of martial artists, it just puts a bad taste in my mouth. So I'm very, and I say, you know, with high praise, I'm very excited that I don't have to go through that whole thing and be able to care myself as a true martial artist. And I felt I've always done that in my time here in North America. And now that everybody does that, you know, it's, it's in everybody's DNA in Asia. It's always about respect and promoting the fight the correct way as two martial artists are going to go in there. We're going to test our skills against each other. I'm very much looking forward to that that way of promoting fights than it is in North America because that was something I just didn't really fit in. And people told me, you know, there's nothing worse than when I'm at the, you know, gym, you know, working out. And somebody says, dude, if you, if you want to be able to, you know, sell more tickets and get your name on, you know, the next Fossey Flakes, you got to talk more trash. And I was like, that's not who I am. I'm not a competitional person. I, I do mixed martial arts because it's something I love and it helps me express my feelings. Like I'm an artist when I go to compete. Artists don't, you know, run their mouth and, you know, attack people or cause a big scene. They they focus and put their energy on what they love to do, which is being a martial artist. What I love to do is being a martial artist. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you. Our next question comes from line of Kanai Andrews from MME Crossfire. Please ask your question. Thank you. A uh, question for DJ. Uh, DJ, you became the first uh, flyweight champion for the UFC back at uh, UFC 152 in 2012. Uh, you did your thing. You helped build up the division there, which was kind of new and different for the fans in North America. And now you're involved in this trade here, which is kind of interesting. Again, people are talking about it. So I was kind of curious, how does it feel to break some new ground and kind of set maybe a new path for maybe future UFC fighters that they could follow at some point? Uh, it, it feels good, you know, but I, I didn't have, it just, this wasn't just done by just me. There was multiple people involved in it, you know, first round management, uh, one championship, Chachri, Matt Hume, uh, the UFC. So it was a collective, uh, people coming together and making something happen. Um, I didn't even been asking. So I, I think it's a great thing. I think if, if people want to be able to be traded between different or go, uh, try them, not try themselves, but uh, be able to compete in different organization. I think that we should have that option on the table. So, I, like I said, I'm always grateful and I'm blessed that this went through and I'm able to be a one athlete and see what my career does over here. Thank you. Our next question comes line of Simon Samano from MMA Junkie. Please ask your question. Hey, Demetrius, congratulations, uh, first of all. Um, I just wanted to ask you, as you now transition over to one championship and you look back at your UFC time, um, do you leave the UFC with any regrets or are you just completely comfortable leaving the organization where you did on the foot that you did? Uh, yeah, I leave the UFC and with, with no regrets on good terms. You know, I believe I've accomplished everything I could there. Uh, different about 11 times, I've won a fight every single way you can possibly think of knockout uh, submission that nobody's ever seen before. I've, I've done everything I can over there. And I think me coming to one championship, there's a lot, of, a lot of new goals, a lot of fresh things, a lot of fresh matchups. And like Chachi said earlier in the call is that this is different. You know, the guys in Asia, they've been doing this since they're three or four years old. So they bring a different type of style of mixed martial arts to the table Train with Bibiano, he, you know, he says, you know, everybody over there is so much trickier. Their stamps a lot sharper. So I'm looking forward to the challenge to see, you know, if I prepare for this. Thank you. Our next question comes from Dylan Bauke from Liberty Multimedia. Please ask a question. Hi there. Thanks for taking my call, guys. My question was for Demetrius. You talk about being a new competitor within one championship, but also Matt Hume has some heavy degree of involvement and, you know, a lot of great competitors in this flyweight division, Akhmatov and Suba, a lot of, you know, great names there, Marais, Ustokwio, for instance. I'm wondering what your level of familiarity is with 
you know, some of the competitors within the flyweight talent pool for one championship? Is it going to be, you know, diligent study going forward, or is there some base level understanding of what all those respective fighters bring to the table? Uh, there's some form of, uh, you know, intelligence of what those guys all bring to the table. Obviously, they're all athletes and all martial artists. Um, and uh, in my whole entire career, I've never gone out and scouted a whole bunch of guys. I always scouted the guy that I'm going to fight when the contract's signed, and that's what I'm getting ready for. But at the end of the day, if I go out there and be the best Demetrius Johnson and be the best martial artist I can be on that night, it shouldn't matter who's across from me. As long as I go out there and execute what I know I can do, then it doesn't matter if it's doesn't matter who's in front of me. I should be able to go out there, execute my game plan, and be able to put them away. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Those are all phenomenal athletes, and I have nothing but the utmost respect for those guys. And I'm just looking forward to be able to share, you know, the ring or cage with them, depending on where, you know, what championship has it at. Thank you. Our next question comes from of Jenny Chua from Sinchu. Please ask a question. Uh, okay, thank you. My question is to Chatri. So now with the signing of um, AD and DJ, are you lo- are you is one championship looking for looking at signing more talents from other international promotions? Uh, yes, we are in multiple discussions uh, with uh, multiple athletes. That's that, that's all I can say. Um, stay tuned for more uh, big announcements. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mika Frank from Cage Minds. Please ask a question. Hi, DJ. You already spoke about wanting to get over to Asia as soon as possible, but do you have a timeline in mind for when you'd like your first appearance to be? Yeah, I was. Uh, I haven't sat down and talked to um but coach yet, uh, I have a lot of travel. I got BlizzCon coming up here pretty soon. I'm going out to Singapore. Uh, I actually, uh, I'm thinking about hopefully maybe January, February, depending on how my body holds up. Um, I just got off of, uh, you know, medication and got healthy again. So once uh, I get back in the gym and start, you know, training, see how the body holds up, then, uh, you know, then I'll try to shoot for hopefully January, February. But it all depends on the body. It depends on, you know, what's going on in one championship as well. Thank you. Our next question comes from Ivan Saldageno from Back Out with Philippines. Please ask a question. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you are, to the by the way, uh, you, you said that you are looking forward to, to fighting early 2019. But how do, how many fights do you need for you challenge Jay Yusaki for the one flyweight title? And to Chatty, what, what will be your early plans for Dimitri? Um, I think there's a few names for for DJ off the bat. I mean, uh, we have Kairat Akhmatov, who's 25 and three. We have uh, Adrian Moraes, who's 17 and three. Uh, even Danny Kingad, uh, Johnny Suba. Uh, there's a, a whole list of uh, flyweights, you know, who uh, would uh, be an excellent uh, matchup with DJ. Um, I'd have to sit down with DJ as well uh, in terms of timing and and and. Um, uh, you know, again, I want him to come in 100% healthy, um, and and nothing short of it. And of course, there's a lot of uh, expectations around the world uh, watching DJ compete in, in one champ for the first time. So he's got to be 100% ready. Um, and, and these are some really really tough guys that uh, again give will, will give DJ an entirely different look from what he's used to. So he's got to become well prepared. Um, you know, and obviously Jay as well is, is is in the mix, but there is no there are no plans. And I think DJ said it right. You know, he's he's the uh, the new the new kid on the block. He's the the new guy won championship flyweight division, and he's got to earn his way to the top. He's not going to get any uh, easy pass or anything. We're going to feed him right away to uh, the sharks and, and see how he does. And I think Chaudhry said it. I'm a very good swimmer, and I'll come over there prepared. So uh, I'm not looking to go in there and get an immediate title shot. I know Jay Hay and Adrian Morris, they have a, a rematch that's going on, which I think they both deserve. And I have no problem working my way up to earn that number one contender, 
the contendership spot. So I'm going to get back in the gym, head down, make sure I'm 100% healthy when I go over to Asia. And it's totally different for me. I've never fought <clears throat> over in Asia. I've always fought in North America. So, you know, with the, the dieting and the sleeping, make sure I take the right approach as a professional to make sure when I step foot in there that I'm 100%. Thank you. The next question comes from Santino Honasan from ABS-CBN. Please ask your question. Uh, hey, good morning. Uh, first of all, DJ, congratulations on the deal. Uh, I asked this to Eddie Alvarez last week as well. Um, with you and Eddie Alvarez coming over, of course, obviously you guys are big names in the uh, mixed martial arts scene. Do you feel that uh, you and Eddie coming over to one championship will also eventually attract even uh, more big names to the promotion? Absolutely, 100%. Um, it, it, uh, one championship is the home of uh, martial arts, you know, and it, it's not even going to be just mixed martial artists coming over to one championship. I'm sure uh, one championship, Chatri, those guys had their eyes out on the best kickboxers, the best Muay Thai guys coming over, possibly from Glory or any other promotions. So I bet you you will see a lot more athletes coming over to one championship on mixed martial arts promotions in North America. But don't don't count out other promotions as well that aren't in the mixed martial arts like kickboxing and Muay Thai. Thank you. Our next question comes from Leon Jennings from Asian Position MMA. Please ask your question. Hi, Christian with DJ. Firstly, welcome to One Championship. Just want to know, is there any fighters still in the UFC that you'd like to face or face again? We'd like to follow you to One Championship. Maybe Henry Cejuda? Uh, that's, uh, that's all depend on that person. I have no idea who wants to follow me. You know, when Henry Cejuda just went in the belt over there in the UFC, I think I have no idea what his plans is. Me and him, we don't talk. Um, but it, it's all up to the athletes, you know. I've always... Asia's always had a, a special part in my heart to be able to compete over there, and for me to have to be able to, for me not to capture or seize the opportunity to come over here and compete in one championship, I felt like I'll be doing myself a disservice and my family and my career. You know, I believe you always want to follow your heart, and I felt like this was the perfect time for me to make it happen. Thank you. The next question comes out of Bob Carson from Carson's Corner. Podcast. Please ask your question. Hi, right, thank you. My question is for DJ. DJ, there's no question that you've had a tumultuous relationship with the UFC. Um, you know, you were on a 13 fight win streak uh, prior to the loss to Henry Cejudo. A lot of people felt that you know this is kind of mistreatment on their part. Did any of that at all factor into your decision to leave the UFC, considering the fact that you know you had several fights on your contract left? No, not at all. It, it, it did not. It was something um, I wanted to do, and I, I'm like I said, it was something I wanted to do, and I, I brought it to my uh, management, and they were able to make it happen, and uh, here we are, now I'm a one athlete. Thank you. The next question comes from of Kan Bui from Detail 247. Please ask a question. Oh, well, Hi. Kerry and everyone, welcome DG to One Championship. Uh, the first question for DG is that do you think that uh, the, how One Championship promotes the organization based on the local culture and uh, the humble fighter characteristic is one of the reasons that you agree to join in the One Championship? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. You know, One Championship, they're, they are about bringing up heroes, and the first time I watched uh, the Burmese Python fight uh, in the last event in Yagan, uh, and I could see how the crowd would react to him after when he stepped in, into the case of the fight and after he won and how the whole crowd was seeing his name. I can see that his countrymen, his people, really see him as a hero, not as, you know, a bad a athlete and who's going to go to a bar after this and beat somebody in the face or anything like that. They, they honestly are the home of martial arts, and it's not just mixed martial arts. It's kickboxing, boxing, Muay Thai, submission grappling, 
And for me, that just intrigues me about it. They're, they're focused on promoting true martial artists, humble, discipline, integrity, and humility, and that's all that I, I stand for. So absolutely, I'm 100% um, on board with that. Thank you. And I think, the next you know, question? from... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead to the next the question. Next question. The next question comes from Tom Taylor from BJPen.com. Please ask a question. Yeah, hi. This question is for DJ. Um, right after this news, the news of the trade broke. Um, Eddie Alvarez gave you a little shout out on on Twitter. Um, I'm just wondering if you and him have shared any words, kind of behind the scenes, if you've discussed your your uh, your simultaneous moves to one championship. Uh, I would say we are both happy. <laughs> Thank you. The next question comes from Jesse Holland, MMAmania.com. Please ask a question. Hi right, again. This is a question for Chatri. Uh, a fight against DJ and, more importantly, a win uh, is the kind of thing that can change a fighter's career. This news broke, and uh, it was pretty much all over the web. How badly did the fighters blow up your phone saying, I want a piece of this guy, uh, let me get him first? Uh, I got <laughs> tons of uh, messages already. Uh, de- definitely, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, for me, I'm a lifelong martial artist too. And for me to, to uh, be able to, uh, to welcome DJ, who I consider the greatest pound-for-pound pound, uh, mixed martial artist in history, and the number one pound for pound king today. Um, it's just an honor, and and I think all the other athletes feel the same way. Um, and, and as DJ had alluded to, you know, it's really just about uh, the, the the spirit of martial arts, especially with martial arts competition. It's not about beating somebody up. It's about testing your craft that you hone for you know years and years against another person, so that you can see how good you are relative to yourself. Uh, you know, there's a saying in martial arts, it's basically the greatest uh, achievement in life is to outperform yourself. And um, I think uh, when, when people message me about wanting to compete against DJ, it's because DJ is the greatest. He's the greatest that's ever done it. And, and I think everyone is just um, super excited to be able to test their skills. And I think, um, you know, and I, and I, again, like I said, I, I spoke to DJ yesterday. I said, hey, DJ, man, just make sure you're 100% you know, ready and, and, and make sure you're uh, not thinking it's going to be a walk in the park because some, some of these guys in the flyweight division are real monsters, real killers, uh, highly decorated uh, world champions in other uh, other martial arts. Um, you know, one championship has 103 uh, world champions on its roster across different disciplines who also happen to compete in, in mixed martial arts. So, you know, if you're competing against a Muay Thai world champion who's already you know, well-versed in wrestling and, 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 and submission grappling, you know, you're going to have your hands full if you're not able to take this person down. So there, these are new challenges for DJ. And I think, um, you know, th- these are guys who've been doing martial arts for their entire lives since they're three years old, um, as, as opposed to in, in the U.S., a lot of mixed martial artists who turn pro and join, you know, the top global organizations, maybe they've done martial arts three years or five years, and they, they, they join the organization. Here in Asia, you know, every single country... There is a mar- homegrown martial art, and all the kids across Asia are, are doing martial arts. So, you know, it's, it's part of the culture, it's part of the history, part of the tradition. And so um, this is just, you know, a really exciting time for Asia. It's a really exciting time for DJ's career. And I think, you know, as one chapter expands, we're, we're going to announce a U.S. TV deal imminently. Um, and I think, you know, with the right marketing, DJ is going to be a global star, not just in Asia, but back at the States because we're going to be marketing him very, very heavily. Thank you. The next question comes from of Desayut Tana Buchai from The Standard. Please ask your question. Uh, first of all, congratulations, DJ, for coming to one championship. Uh, I'm asking from the fans perspective here, fan perspective here in Thailand. Uh, a few of them have actually called me and asked uh, about your lost title lost the title in August and how come you didn't decide to go back and maybe take the title before coming to join the one championship and the other question is actually for Kun Chatri I want to ask about this historical deal and what it means to the industry 
for the mixed martial art and is it possible in the future for one championship and UFC maybe to have a crossover fight? Uh, I think for me, going back and trying to regain my title, there was there was nothing there for me to because I, I looked at it as a standpoint as a, a martial artist. It was something that I've already beaten Mr. Hudo, and I truly felt that uh, I had been beaten a lot worse uh, in my fight. You know, when I fought Dominic Cruz, I felt like I truly was the smaller guy. I truly truly felt like I got. I mean, he he suplexed me for three times for God's sakes. So with that, I thought if I went back and fought. Who knows how the fight could have won? I could have won it the third time, or I could have lost again. And I took a step back and I said, "Okay, what do I truly want?" Like, let's ask yourself that, DJ. What do you truly want? And I was like, I wanted something different. I wanted to mix it up. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to be able to like, walk out to the cage and feel butterflies, or if it's the ring. I want to face different type of competition. And I knew if I went back and if I would won the belt again, then I knew I would be staying in the exact same organization, fighting the exact same athletes, which they are phenomenal athletes, but I beat pretty much everybody on that roster so far. And so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to me. Opportunity to me. I wasn't uh, held by being a champion anymore uh, for the longest time. You know, a lot of people in North America wanted a new champion to see if they can really push that pay-per-view model. They really didn't care about how my skill set was. They really wanted somebody who was going to be brash, who's going to disrespect, and not that Hammer Stewart did that, but they wanted somebody else. I felt like they wanted somebody else. And when I say somebody else, not the UFC, I felt like the public wanted somebody else to try to take that mantle to somewhere I could, like for numbers or, or bring notoriety or whatever. And so I felt like, you know what, this is my perfect time for me to go pursue something I want to pursue and let those guys handle that. And that's how... I, I genuinely felt, you know, like I'm going to pursue what I wanted to do, which is compete in one championship in Asia and test my skill set over there. Yeah, and, and for me, you know, uh, DJ, you know, beat Henry uh, the first time uh, via KO uh, very quickly. And in this last fight, uh, it was very close. And, and the judges, it could have gone either way, you know, uh, being a split decision. Um, I actually had it in favor of DJ um, in my own uh, scorecard. Um, but the reality is this. DJ is still in the prime of his career. The best of DJ is going to come in the next three years, five years. Um, he's just getting started. Um, yes, he's accomplished a lot, a hell of a lot already. Um, but again, it's a whole different uh, style of fighting out here. And can he adapt? Can he conquer? Can he, can he do what he's done in the past? Those are big, big question marks for me. Um, and I think uh, for me, you know, this, this, this trade being historic, I didn't really think of it that way initially, but then, you know, there's a lot of media saying this is the first historic trade. So I guess, it, yeah, I mean, it is. So it, it's, it's great to be part of it, but that was never part of the uh, why I was doing this. I was doing this genuinely because I saw a win-win-win situation for all parties involved. Um, and honestly, DJ's, he's my number one or number two most favorite fighters ever. So, um, again, it's an honor for me to be able to work with him and, and to showcase his real skills, but, but, but more importantly, tell his story and, and, and make sure, uh, people really tr get to know DJ for who he is. And, and once people do, uh, you know, I really believe he's going to be that global superstar and, and his, his ability to inspire the world, his ability to, to, to affect change, um, his ability to do good in the world uh, is just going to be magnified exponentially uh, on the One Championship platform. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Brian Mazikri from Borders. Please ask a question. Uh, DJ, you know, what we've been talking a lot about martial arts, and, and I touched on the gaming thing with you a little bit earlier, and you mentioned that you were going to BlizzCon. So I wanted to ask you, right now, what what games are you playing? Are you playing Red Dead Redemption? Are you playing Soul Calibur? What, what are you What are you gaming on right now? Uh, I'm dabbling a little bit into Soul Calibur Six. Uh, currently playing World of Warcraft, uh, Battle for Azeroth, uh, playing uh, PUBG Player Unknown, and I've been playing the new Call of Duty Blackout. Uh, Black Ops 4. Um, so I've been circling around, but my my Halo game that I've been playing a lot on the Twitch channel and all everybody hates it is uh, is World of Warcraft. I'm just 
I've been a big fan of that since Burning Crusade back in, I think it was 2008 that came in, it came out. And so that's, that's where we're focusing most of our time on right now. But I've been, I just competed at uh, TwitchCon for the uh, eSports Reader Bowl, came in second place. There was four teams, one first place and three second place. So I feel good about that. But So I've, I've just been playing everything. Thank you. The next question, come motion of J.P. Manahan from Life Cars PH. Please ask a question. Uh, hello and good morning. I uh, just want to confirm that, uh, y do you have any confirmed that Demetrius is, has an early 2019 plan for Chatri for regarding the fight, for regarding for his fight? And also, how does the welterweight, uh, I know you said that there's a November 17 title fight for the welterweight division, but how does the, that division uh, com figure in without uh, Ben Askren? So, you know, uh, first of all, uh, yeah, I do think DJ fighting in January or February is probably over the big time line. And I do believe it's going to be one of the names I mentioned. So whether it's Kyra Akhmetov or whether it's, you know, uh, uh, John Tuba, whether it's Johnny King Dad or whether it's, it's uh, Adriana Marias, um, there's a whole list of guys who, who uh, would be uh, make an excellent uh, welcome for, for, for DJ. Um, and... Uh, Yes, I mean, I, I do have big plans for DJ. I do, I do want to keep him very active, um, you know, as active as he wants to be, um, and, and really uh, promote his brand and promote who he is, uh, not only in Asia, but across the world. Um, and then to your uh, second question, uh, what was the second question again? Uh, the, uh, the departure of Ben, and I know you said that there's oh, the... Right. Uh, right. Yeah, so, so, so you know, we, we we are like I like I mentioned earlier. You know, we are in multiple discussions with many athletes around the world. Uh, some big names, some rising stars. It, you know, it, it's uh, so stay tuned for some big announcements. But I mean, um, we're we're constant. I mean, if you look at our if, our if you look at our roster today, across all the different martial arts that we that we offer on on the One Championship platform, whether it's MMA or whether it's Muay Thai, kickboxing boxing or submission grappling etc um we've upgraded our, our roster you know significantly um i mean the roster is day and night uh, versus a year ago day and night versus two years ago um i would say the roster one champion today is as strong as it's ever been in history um from mixed martial arts you know having the greatest pound for pound athlete dj in kickboxing having the greatest pound for pound kickboxer in history uh georgia petrosian in Muay Thai, having the greatest pound for pound Muay Thai fighter in history, Yotsang Pai Fairtex. Um, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, having Roger Gracie, the greatest uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu stylist to ever live. Uh, you know, sufficient grappling, having the pound for pound best Gary Tonin. Um, you know, it, it, we're just stacked across all the, the forms of martial arts now, all the disciplines, and, and the bench is very, very deep. Um, maybe the Western media has not. He's not familiar with a lot of these names, but these guys are lifelong martial arts. And, I, and again, I reiterate, on the roster of one championship, we have 103 world champions. There is no other roster in the entire planet that has 103 world champions um, from different various backgrounds, right? Um, so I, I would argue that uh, one championship has, right now, the greatest world championship talent in martial arts uh, available anywhere in the world. Thank you. Our next question comes from Andrew Whitelaw from Fox Sport Asia. Please ask your question. Hi, Chatri. Uh, the news came out in August about the launch, the debut show in Tokyo, Japan, that we can look forward to at the end of March. Given the magnitude of that show and I suppose the importance of the Japanese market, the news of Eddie signing and now DJ came swiftly on the back of that. So how keen would you be to have one or both of those guys feature on the Japan card. Oh, I think it would. I think it would be epic. And you know, we. I'm going to start uh, on the uh, Japan card with uh, the, the competition team. We're going to start looking at the, at the Japan card probably in the next month or so. And yeah, we, we definitely want to stack it with the with, with big names. And so probably Eddie will be on it, or DJ, or both. Um, and you know, we're going to do it uh, at Ryogoku, which is the um, symbolic home of martial arts for Japan, 
Uh, it's where the Sumo World Championships are held and in a really historic building. And we chose that because we wanted to honor, you know, the real Bushido uh, way of martial arts in Japan uh, with their, you know, Sumo being one of the greatest cultural treasures of Japan and holding it in, 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 in the place where they hold their annual Sumo Championships for, the, for, for centuries, right? So this is going to be amazing. Thank you. And our last question comes from of Damian Martin from MMAweekly.com. Please ask a question. <clears throat> DJ, one last question for you, kind of a two-part question. You're done with the UFC now. You're part of one championship. But I'm sure you've heard the rumors, you know, with your exit and now Henry Cejudo possibly going up to 135 of the UFC getting rid of the flyweight division. So I want to get your thoughts on if that happens. And kind of the second part of that, would you like to see if that does happen, some of the fighters from the UFC maybe join you in one championship? Uh, yes, I did hear about that. I think it's unfortunate. I think the flyweight division uh, in North America and in the UFC is, is a fantastic division. Um, I think, you know, as uh, me being an athlete and, and a martial artist, I think it's not always about does you know does this division make money? I guess you can say. I think they should keep that division. My personal opinion. They have a new champion, a lot of new fresh matchups. They can you know try to sell. I mean, they can they can work it out. Um, and that's uh, that's up to the athletes. I mean, if the athletes want to follow, I mean, they all have their own passions and their own goals that they want to pursue. And there's uh, many organizations organizations out there, but uh, I truly believe that one championship is probably the best one for all those guys um, because it, you know, embodies uh, martial artists. 